Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another The Kigo and Big Joe Show. So I think we've been live on Facebook, Kigo. There was a little time delay on Facebook. You never really quite know what you're doing. How are you, mate? You well? I'm not too bad. Uh, you, you, the, our, the entire world caught me nearly picking my nose, but thankfully, uh, if I don't tell them about it, it never happens. <laughs> I'm all good. How are you? Yeah, all good me here, and uh, yeah, you know, life is uh, life is taken on by. There's lots of people in the world worse off than us. So uh, tonight we are going to be uh, everybody's welcome to the show. Going to be an interesting one tonight. World Rugby Elections is our special tonight. We've gone from thirty minutes. To, we've gone from thirty minutes constantly upwards. World Rugby Elections is it a way forward or a forward pass? I like that little play on words there myself. I, <laughs> I giggled to myself. I was pleased. I wanted to write home and tell somebody, and then. I shared it with somebody and they just looked at me like I was just so it was a bit wasted, really. But th there we go. You're all very, very welcome to the show, lads. And you can put any comments you want up um, as we go forward. We are, as ever, supported by, uh, sustained actually tonight by our good friends at coffeedog.ie. And uh, I have I don't many, mind. he's got I have as many questions sent to me in uh, in PMs about, uh, you know, the style of coffee and stuff like that. So I put him in touch with, uh, with Johnny and the team. Um, but yes, uh, the uh, the biggest question is, is the promotion still on? Yes. Do we send it anywhere in the world? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Go, go promotional code SHEP, S-H-E-P. We'll give you 20% off. And uh, we're also uh, supporters tonight, actually, by Calpify. Go to Calpify. You know, that's from South Africa. It's a creative designer and is doing some fab work for us on intros. Um, so uh, we're giving him a, a sort of a shout out tonight. Good lad, the Ruin. Well done for all the hard work you've done, mate. But go to Calpify on uh, on Facebook and have a look at his stuff and support him he's just starting out and uh, yeah it's the way it should be done um who else have we got on uh, the show before we go into things tonight rihanna phillips our welsh was a death says hiya that's a kiss that's for you uh, kigo obviously oh thanks very uh, much yeah absolutely yeah 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 first, yeah, yeah. first, one, of the, first one of the day First one of the here, there you go. Uh, Ian Gilbert, uh, our ambassador extraordinary from the court of three blokes to Madrid. Hola, Ian. I hope that you are well. Uh, Des McCusk. <laughs> I think it was for Des McCusk. There you go. And Des, thanks anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, tonight we're looking at... Um, oh, there you go. Uh, we have oh, all sorts of things created on the side here. Um, we are tonight looking, me and Kegel, looking at uh, the World Rugby elections coming up. I think it's the 12th of May, Neil. And... Mm -hmm. um, it uh you know and whether what's good bad or different in the post today you'll see uh that i did for you put the links into the manifestos from sir bill bowman current chairman and from augustin pichot who is the uh, uh who is the current vice chair who's who's running uh, against him actually the team uh isn't it kigo it's uh, it's mm. bill as current chairman and uh, michel bernard laporte the great french uh, rugby star who is his running mate a little bit of politics uh statements taken there but there we go so, um, <clears throat> but before we move on, a couple of things in news I pick up today. First, we'd like to say a shout out to our friends in Canada. You know, we have we have uh, people from Canada watching uh, through the uh, little forum out there called the Six Nations Canada. There's a there's a forum in Canada who follow the Six Nations. So, good shout out to you. Well done, and uh, commiserations to everybody uh, on the death of 16 people. Um, out in Canada by a, by a gunman in the last 24 hours. Very, very sad. And uh, as if we haven't got enough going on in the world uh, that we have troubled souls doing that. So our, to our friends in Canada, uh, our thoughts are with you at this dreadful time um, and to everybody else around the globe who is finding their way through uh, COVID-19. The other one today was um, Monster Prop, James, an island prop, James Cronin, <coughs> was picked up, got a month banned for illegal substance. However, it turns out that he had been given the wrong uh, medicine in real terms, you know, you, you can only take it a fact from, you know, fact checked from three different sites if, they, if that's a fact check. Uh, but it looks like he was given the, the the wrong thing. You know, I'd be hauling up the, uh, the the person who gave it to him in the first place. It could have been anything in that. It's pretty funny. In nowadays, you just think that wouldn't that sort of thing wouldn't happen in here, would it? Uh, you'd hope not. Uh, you know, I, I went in for a sedative and they gave me Viagra once, which you know, every dark cloud. But uh, I think the question on this Explains is. The hair. Yeah, it's yeah. You gotta you gotta wonder uh, how often this happens. Um, if you do your research on the drug he took, um, just have a look at that without going into uh, into anything that would get get me sued for for all of my worth. But um, have a look, do your research, and I wonder does this happen a lot? 
Yeah, <coughs> I think the um, it's it's very difficult, isn't it, for sports stars? I mean, we have mm. had it in the past, but uh, something like uh, it's it's difficult anyway. Our thoughts go out to James. Actually, you know, the fact that he picked up a ban anyway. There's no rugby on, so it, it's just the whole thing. It just makes a bit of a mockery uh, for for me. But anyway, that, that's the two bits of breaking news um, I found today. Um, anything else you picked picked up in the uh, rugby sphere, as uh, Sir Jeff would say? Uh, I haven't. The, the main thing I've been trying to do is avoid news and avoid everything. Uh, you know, it's, times are getting a little bit tougher. We got a bit complacent with the COVID thing over the last 24, 48 hours and bad news again today on it. So everyone, look, we love rugby. We're going to talk about rugby. We're going to enjoy it. Get involved. But just keep doing what you're doing. Keep taking care of yourself. Keep taking care of your family. Don't leave your house. All the rest of your stuff. Uh, normal programming resuming now. Absolutely cool. Uh, Nigel Quigley, White Walker 1 um, up there is on. Uh, good afternoon, <laughs> folks of Rugby Dumb. Absolutely. Uh, interesting. Rugby Dumb, that's a different thing. I've not seen that written like that. Fine, fine folks, <laughs> the fine bulls. The bulls, folks, trolls. Oh, I don't know what's going on up there. You see, ever since ever since that, uh, that, uh, that iced wall went back up again, mate, I, I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. I'm, you know, obviously... I've got a storage of wine up there, mate, that I can't even collect. I fell out somebody to drink. You know, first come, first say, there you go, it was delivered to somebody and I couldn't get up there in time. So, uh, fair bonus, I, mean, I hope they're enjoying that. Uh, Porrick Kelly. Uh, oh, 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 I almost forgot. Porrick. Here we go. I don't know what's happening. Porrick Kelly is one half of, uh, with Ushin Collins, uh, been on our panel, and to be on in a few weeks' time, one half of uh, the Second Row podcasters, Connacht fans. And he sent me this, they sent me this the other day, uh, purely and simply for so for doing a bit of a, a a pod for them a while ago. And I, do you know what? It, it meant so much, be, and it's a reason, really it came out of the blue, and I, it came out of the blue, and I had uh, a handwritten note in it. Uh, which uh, I don't think I've I've had a handwritten note if I've got that on right there. But there you go. From the second row podcast, boys, Porrick Kelly and Ushin Collins. Thanks very much, lads. I wear that one with their pride. I sit in the Conic Exiles group, as you know. Well done, Porrick. Uh, only 10 countries are uh, taking mail at the moment. Uh, found out the hard way the other day. <laughs> right, there you go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So uh, what else have we got on? So. The two manifestos, we put the links in there. If you want to educate yourself a little bit, then go into those afterwards uh, and um, have a look at those and see uh, see what you think they are. Um, I, I put a couple of notes in. Um, so on one side, it's almost like the United Nations now, you know, in politics with people vying for factions on all sides. Absolutely no different than any corporate organisation. I don't think why people should be any different. It shouldn't be because it's sport. And we know our sport and politics, Hugo, we don't like them to mix, but unfortunately, human nature says it is. However... <clears throat> on one side, you've got the current chairman, the legendary, and here's a legend, Sir Bill Beaumont. You know, from uh, from playing to rugby administration, he's done everything. And he's been there since 2016. And he's held things together in a very, very difficult period. And it's, um, you know, and, and it, it, it has been a difficult time. We will never know. None of us will ever, ever know how difficult it is to get things through um, in an organization like that where you have got competitions that you have no control over. And that's one of my biggest points is that these comp these competitions, um, <clears throat> Six Nations, Pro 14, Super Rugby, Rugby Championship, all of them, I'm not, not just singling them out, it's everybody. They are a financial entity in their own right. Why, you know, my perspective is that why, uh, why don't the Six Nations want um, a Division Two. There is a Division Two in real terms called the Europe, uh, the Rugby Euro, uh, European Championship. Why don't they want a formalised uh, promotion and relegation? Because it could affect them financially. So first and foremost, they look to themselves. Over to me, absolutely. Yes, I was just doing the money, money, money sign. Um, in the in the notes I I'm took sorry. for today, in the, in the notes I took for today, that's what I've written at the very top of the page, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into in a sec. But yeah, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to be talking about the things we don't want to talk about, that being sport mixing with politics. And that's, it makes me feel a bit uh, a bit mucky on a Monday, but uh, sure, you know, we've we've all been mucky on a Monday before. We'll get everything out today, and then we won't have to talk, to, talk about it until we give out about the World <laughs> Club Championship that comes next year. Absolutely. So, on what you're absolutely quite right, mate, and a lot of it is, is all about money. So, on one side of the protagonist, we've got Sir, Sir Bill Beaumont, Cotton Chairman, and Monsieur, uh, Monsieur Bernard Laporte, the uh, great French rugby star, who's vying to be his running mate. 
bit of a political term, I think, there, uh, you know, been used for the first time. And, uh, you know, in summary, as I say, the, the, I put the links in there to both their manifestos for people to read. Um, but uh, in some, Sir Bill and Bernard are proposing a wide ranging governance review by an external two person team. Um, all major stakeholders internally within rugby and experts externally from rugby will be uh, consulted to get a point to get to a point where it's more of an inclusive and diverse federation, not one that is the benefit of the old guard. And that I think is the biggest uh, the biggest issue with the people's perceptions in rugby. Uh, they want to see a coherent global rugby calendar. Again, that keeps popping up again. We've spoken about that before. Putting players at the heart of the decisions made and developing aspiring teams at all levels. Uh, a review of funding in all areas is what those gentlemen are doing. So that's in, in summary. You can like so you, so you can read it in all there in the manifesto. Where um, Augustin uh, uh, Gus um, Pichot, uh, the legendary scrum half from Argentina, again, well-versed as a player, as an ambassador, as a, as a rugby administrator, he he's done a lot as well. There's been Sir Bill's vice chair. He's now pushing for the chairman. You know, he is uh, rightly saying that uh, he outlines that uh, through this current crisis, we have an opportunity for realignment that we cannot miss. In fact, I had a pint to say that if we don't do something now, we'll never have the same opportunity again. He says that we need a glo global rugby calendar. Everybody agrees on that. He also wants a strategic intent to attract sustainable investment, not giving uh, continued uh, handouts to, to federations and unions, especially the minnows. It's time to treat all unions and federations equally, Gus says. Um, he adds that it's time to engage in a more dynamic and modern way and to develop clear rules of engagement uh, where world rugby can engage with competitions um, and uh, with both countries and leads. And I've covered the point on that competitions are run by private entities, so what do you do? So both men for me are saying, effectively saying the same. There's no there's no major points really, apart from those I've, I've, I've outlined. Um, I think that Sybil has done a difficult job in the current times, in, in the last four or five years. I think that uh, Gus is a new breath and has more of a, and there's no disrespect to Sybil here, more of a grassroots and minnows focused approach because he's been on that side. So you can see why the, the factions are going sort of from one side to another, blah, 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 blah. And I, it's actually, I think they complement each other well. It's just a shame that they haven't, for me, that, you know, if you were looking for two people to go into an organization like that, who have got a bit of the old guard and some of the new type of stuff, you'd put Sir Bill and Gus together. I don't know. Th th there we go. That, that's what they're both, you know, espousing and stuff. Your thoughts, Neil? Well, they've got they've got variations of the same old theme, but you've yeah. kind of the, the way they've the narrative has been built um, is is you've got the old guard. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Don't look too deeply into what's been promised. Just look at the big picture, not the detail. In Bill Beaumont, former uh, captain on Question of Sport, which is one of his accolades that you forgot to mention, uh, and then yeah, and then you've got Pisho, who who I don't know. He keeps pushing this that he has kids and he sees how his kids interact with other sports, which I think is really, really interesting. Like I, I'm being silly in the comments when I say I want the video game, but it's it's he's thinking differently and, and slightly differently, which I think is important as well. Uh, I'm not saying a video game is going to save the day, but it's just different thinking. Everyone wants a different calendar. Everyone wants a calendar that fits together. Fits together. Everyone says they want to look at budgets. Very few of them actually do. You know what I mean? They've been working together for a while, so that you know what, whatever, uh, whatever you know what you throw at Bill Beaumont, you will throw it throw at uh, Pichot as well because they were working together. They knew exactly what was going on. Uh, I think the key in this, in terms of who actually wins, and I, I gave you a teaser before we went live. It's, it's of the people who have not declared their vote yet in, in, in the voting. So skipping ahead a wee bit, you've got, you've got the three I picked out of the list who haven't declared yet. Now, maybe they have behind closed doors, but you've got the USA, you've got Fiji, and you've got Samoa, right? Now, that's three of, of the 11. Um, three who need massive, massive amounts of money. Uh, you know, Chapter 11 over in the States, unfortunately, which... Okay, they, they, they'll eventually bounce back from, but it's a big roadblock after the momentum they've been building. Fiji and Samoa have been cast aside by most uh, most incumbents for, for the 100 years. Um, you, if, if Pichot is able to reach out to those guys and kind of go, look, here's a plan. I'm not guaranteeing you 
a blank checkbook or anything, but here's a plan of bringing you into the fold. We're not going to create a championship that Fiji and Samoa aren't invited to, but we will lay the table for you to get to that to that championship, something like that. I think, you know, the hippie in me is saying, um, you know, Pichot's the, the way he thinks is nice, is good. It, it, it makes me feel good in a political situation. But I also understand that politics are there for a reason and sport is sport. And I think I think Big Bad Bill is going to be sending out an email or an encrypted WhatsApp message to, to the USA saying, guys, I get it. You're in trouble. Let's help each other here and, and get him over the line, which means we're, we're going into another pretend look at the calendar and another fail. Whether he succeeds or not, he's failed three times in trying to get a tournament off the ground. Um, now, he has got everything going in a tough time, but if you look at the club game in Ireland, and if you look at the club game in, okay, England is different, it's owned separately, but if you look at the AIL, it's Banjax. You know, we, we've kind of funneled our way up to the four provinces, which is beautiful. But, like, we should all, we sh it should be slightly spread out a bit more, which I think Pichot is better for grassroots, uh, whereas, whereas Bill is probably better for the top top level guys. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> So that goes back again to the fact of actually they'd be ideal together, yeah. <laughs> rather than the other part. <clears throat> but something hasn't quite gelled or worked. And again, I go back to in any corporation, you you know, you've got the chair, you've got the vice chair, and you don't know which factions are working in whose backyard to support who. And so actually, you know, when Gus came out about the the World League, and actually an awful lot of people slated them for I didn't. I I, I thought there was a good uh, good methodology for why he wanted to to be able to do that. <coughs> Excuse me, because for me it gave a leg up on promotion and relegation, the natural Darwinian thing that we find ourselves in now. Thank goodness um, <coughs> to uh, to do it. And so, and but a lot of people just had their ways of you know were very blinkered. You know, I I do mm -hmm. think that the northern hemisphere. Well, there are eight teams really in the in the world who have controlled and manipulated, gerrymandered the rugby system. We all know who they are. Recent times, we've added the likes of Argentina and stuff like that. That's not negative terminology. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. I go back to the Six Nations, Scotland or Ireland or Italy or any one of those. They all have one sixth of a control vested interest in the Six Nations because that's the way that the Six Nations company is set up in simple terms. So <laughs> the rugby championship, the European championship, they don't really want that to go. And it's the same for all the other competitions. What has Gus proposed actually that we had leagues that would help people come up? I think what he missed was, I don't think the timing was particularly right. And I think that it was missed opportunities. Yeah. One of my big things is that I think that, well, People forget, actually, Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 don't exist anymore. There's no such thing. But we will refer to them as that tonight for mm -hmm. ease of understanding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and, and the fact that people don't even know that anymore. So you've got development and all that sort of stuff. Anyway. But so, I, I, think, I think part of the problem, sorry to jump in, but I think yeah, yeah. part of the problem is we're, we're, we're reading, we're all reading the same stuff, and we're kind of, we're just saying, we're sitting down, we're stationary. Tell us how you plan to do this. Yes. It's like any, it's like our local elections, you know, for a couple of months ago. Tell us how you want. Of course, we all want to pay no tax, want to play rugby all the time and have cheap tickets to, to the Aviva. It's not realistic. So we need we need the two candidates in this case to tell us. The roadmap. Exactly. Now, roadmaps, you don't always get to where you want to go by how you meant to get there. Yep. But if you give us an idea and the idea is thought out, uh, everything from the timing of the announcement to your presentation to... Can Kigo understand it? Can Big Joe understand it? Because they're the, they're the, they the brainwave activity is very different than those two people. If 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 we can understand it, anyone can understand it, and that's the key. But that's the information that we are struggling to find. Um, a, and you're right. And and even the manifestos for me were a bit yeah. wordy watershed. You know, yeah. The, the the bits that I summated, I the, the little bits I've read out were the summation bits that I've mm -hmm. taken out of the their manifestos. Um, and it wasn't easy, you know, um, talking from Twitter <coughs> anyway, but it, it, it just, it, it wasn't helpful. So I want to see, you know, the strategic level, that's great. Okay. Yeah. We want to make the world great place. We have a global rugby thing, blah, blah, blah. Right. How are we, what are the operations? How are we going to yeah. do that? What are the key points? What are the 10, 12 key areas <laughs> broken down of who's going to do what covering, you know, if you like two, one, two, and three, how are you going to develop that? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then the oper operational pieces, how you deliver that. As you said, in the roadmap, what, what what are the phases you're going to go through? It doesn't matter whether you get there. 
Yeah. Because at least if you if you get if you you put a, you, if you outline that because then people like me and you who are thickos in real terms, you being more cleverer than me clearly, um, are. Wow. Or, um, <laughs> we can read that and go right. I know what they're trying to do because the points are there. I know the the roadmap or the timeline or when they're going to do it, and I yeah. know tactically how it's going to be delivered. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect me and grassroots fans and fans around the globe? That's yeah. all it needs doing. But there isn't that there, you know. And I think well, that's what. Yeah, it's it's like they're scared of failure, which is understandable. Like saying you're going to do something and it doesn't happen, but we all understand that it's. It's you know this is just your your roadmap that you've checked out researched and this is how you see it going. It doesn't always go that way, but the only difference is I think in in uh, it must have been one of the ones you sent me. Uh, P show was talking about a ten year financial plan. You go yeah. that sounds great. Tell me about it though. What do you, what does that mean? Are you going to save a ten or a year for ten years? What's happening? So you know like the, our mortgage advisor says the same thing, but he doesn't actually go into detail. So yeah. I, I spent all the winter heating money already. So but you kind of go like. Just talk to us. We're not stupid. We're interested. And we it's not like you're going door to door in a local election talking to people who don't want to talk to you. We all want to talk to you. We are all interested. We are all, everyone watching this are hardcore uh, rugby supporters and, and fans in there too, but supporters who want everything to go well, who want everything to be, even if I can't afford to go to Lansdowne Road, I want it to be full. I want I want Seapoint to be full down the road. So tell us how you're going to do it. If you don't do it, I don't trust you. It means It means you're hiding something. You know what I mean? If someone says, I'm going to climb Everest, but you do no training, you're never going to climb Everest. No. And, and they've got to get away from the vested interest. Oh, yeah. The vested interest in, internally, put the focus. And, <clears throat> and both say that. Gus says that more, to be in fairness, that more, more vested interest in the, the players at the heart of, of the game, more than... Um, and I think, he's, I think he's more dynamic in his approach. Again... Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. It's uh, three, but uh, to the key on Big Joe show. Uh, there's, there's a great, there's a bottle of Malbec. I owe Keegan for that one. <laughs> uh, <coughs> the uh, key on Big Joe show. We're looking at uh, world rugby elections, um, a way forward or a forward pass. Um, so the, the the problem is there's nothing sort of outlined um, directly. Uh, as, as you point out, um, in fact, I've just picked up on this one here. White Walker won up in Ulster. Nigel quickly says, Leinster have bought no parries, apparently. I didn't see that in the World Rugby Election Roadmap, uh, personally, but but I'll, uh, you know, if I see Sir Bill and, and Gus uh, on when they do the platform, they should be doing a platform thing, shouldn't they? Imagine that. You know, like politicians we'll do. Next week. We'll yeah, yeah, week. yeah. We, we could have them on next week, couldn't we? You know, so, you know, and the people can question them. Uh, but you're welcome to the show, ladies and gents. Actually, if you've got a point and you want to come on into the studio with me and Kigo tonight, put a message up there and I'll send you the link and you can come on in. Um, in fact, I'll stick the link up in a minute once Kigo's speaking right. Who else have we got on? Yeah, uh, so, so we'll give you the address to Joe's house and you just show <laughs> up and stand beside him. But you've got to bring a, you've got, yeah, you've got to, outside, I'm going to put the camera out. <laughs> you've, got bring, you've got to bring a bottle of Malbec with you, though, because I'm, I'm running short at the moment. Uh, some bloke called Nanana -na -na Eel Keegan's complaining to Porrig that he didn't get one of these lovely badges. It's awful. It's awful. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. Uh, Gerald Williamson says that, uh, Gerald, good evening to you. We hope that you are well in Navin. Uh, Mr. Pichot, Gus uh, wants the Lions to tour in America. What chances? I saw a lot of uh, bad feelings. Money, 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 money. money, money, money. Um, absolutely. I understand why he's doing it because it's a very marketable thing. Um, yeah. But again, until we sort out, for me personally, until we sort out the rugby calendar, until we sort out the playing hours, if you're going to put players and, and welfare at the heart of everything, then you've got to cut down on what you're doing. That means you've got to get a It goes back again for me that you've got to get a grip of the competitions. How many games they're playing, working with the union, are they, here's a question, are World Rugby a bit like the United Nations, a toothless beast? Great idea, but if they have no control over the competitions and therefore the, the players and the welfare, how can they dictate anything? They can't, they're like the person down the road shouting to turn their music down. The problem is that they're, the balance sheet at the end of the year is going to look good because they have all of that money, but they do not own anything. Okay, they own the building they operate out of, I think, but they don't own the Six Nations. Um, they, they've very, very little input into, into the Premiership. Pro 14 keeps adding teams every other year. So you, they, they may be plus in the money column, but they don't actually own anything. They've, it's basically they've higher purchased all these things. 
And so if they they can say what they can say what they want, but at the end of the day, Gallagher's Premiership and the Six Nations, especially, who were really really against the promotion relegation thing, which was knocking uh, Bill's Bill Beaumont's idea on the head there uh, last year. Um, whereas if they if they thought about, if Six Nations thought about it a wee bit, it would mean that the last day of the Six Nations is important for everybody, not just the top two or top three who are in the running. You have a playoff. And and that will fill a stadium that will put a load of people on their couch watching the watching the tally. So I think that's a good idea that they were maybe frightened of. Uh, but I think the problem is they basically higher purchased rugby, which is grand for the fact the balance sheet at the end of the year. But in reality, it's not it's not massively important. They can't really do anything. How how do you get around it, Neil? I'm just putting up a guest link. For people who want to come in. Um, well, uh, the problem is now you can't. They don't have the money to buy back uh, the things that they've leased out. Like they can't. They can't all of a sudden say to, unless they buy out Gallagher's Premiership as the main sponsor. If you're the main sponsor, then you have a bit of clout. But in reality, all of the all of the clubs have an owner, an independent owner who doesn't really care about the World Cup, doesn't really care about the Heineken Cup. If we're being honest, they want to win the Gallagher's Premiership. Okay, Heineken Cup, they do care about. But like a world club championship has no real benefit to them, unless you're going to say, for the winner of these new competitions, get some astronomical amount of money. That's the problem we're at at the moment. If you say mm. the winner of the world club championship gets hundred million euro, then it doesn't matter who owns the competition, the clubs will want to win that. So that's the only way you can do it. Unfortunately, and we hate talking about money. You and me, we hate it. We hate the politics. It's a sport, but if you've got to use those tools to get the job done, uh, sometimes you got to do bad things to do the right thing, as my hitman friend said. <laughs> and and you know that. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, yeah, no, I I, uh, I totally agree. Um, you see, you talk about your hitman friend. There. Are you drinking a um, a gin and tonic there with a slice of lemon in it? I, are you in, oh, are you are you in the room with me? Yes. Oh, is that gin and tonic with a slice of lemon, Mister Kigo? The I, beast. I, I, and two novelty, I don't know if you can see that, two novelty ice cubes. The Beast of Bray, the Wicklow Warrior, the Couch Pundit with novelty ice cubes and a slice of lemon. Who would well, have thought, ladies and gentlemen? I've got, to, I've got to stay trim during this pandemic. I've got to keep Her Royal Highness interested. So we're, we're on the gin and tonics. Yeah. And it's actually slimline tonic. Good man yourself. Excellent. Uh, there we go. We know what Kigo is drinking tonight. Uh, <laughs> so he says, um, if I had a vote and I'm not sure why I don't. That's a very good Fair point. point. Why? Fair point. Z always comes up because she's a professor, you see, because she's clever. That's why we have people involved. <laughs> to, um, to, to uh, we're we're going to get you a t-shirt, mate, Zee. I'm a professor and I'm clever. Yeah, exactly. She is, and a top girl as well. So Z says um, she doesn't know why she doesn't have a vote, and we're going to discuss that now because that's excellent. Uh, she'd vote for P Show. Uh, uh, Quinton is on from South Africa. Quinton Van Ice Cream. <laughs> so far, last week. So Quinton, great to have you on, mate uh p shows in the same play administration yeah absolutely um and and i'm a huge i i voted i didn't vote i voted sort of in the virtual world for uh, for sabil last time and uh, but i my vote this time would be for gus um to um to, to because i think he's gonna add i always go for the underdog i always go for the minnows and i want to see natural darwinian promotion and relegation i want to see tier one teams as they were you know the top nations supporting tier two and tier three and doing that i mean by um Actually, in fairness to him, Eddie Jones has done some of this before by by coaching other teams and giving them kit and equipment and stuff like that yeah. and playing them and giving them the funds from that. So you could pick, you know, one tier two team as well as a couple of tier three teams and they support them. But we've got to cut down on the amount of games to be able to do that. That's the only way you're going to develop. Goes back again to the money thing of the competitions won't allow that because the sponsors and the TV rights. So that's my aspiration and that's yeah. how i would simply do it if you want to develop glo global league where you've got promotion and relegation all the way through from the bottom all the way through so that's how they're going to aspire because they know that one day like like Akronson stanley in the round ball game they could get from the northern county northwest counties league to the premier league it is technically possible to be able to do that but we don't have that in rugby again there are issues for me where the, the the I don't know whether they are franchises actually, but where World Rugby has its region. So look at the debacle, Kigo, with Rugby Europe over the Rugby World yeah. Cup. 
that was just disgraceful. You know, how, how difficult is it, for, is it for teams to aspire to get into world rugby? Look at our good friends in Gibraltar, mm -hmm. you know, blocked by a close neighbour. It is alleged. <laughs> I can say all that. It is alleged. <laughs> but, but these are the things. Let's make it easy for teams to aspire to be part of, you know, world rugby. You join world rugby, you're allocated into the region. You know, it's not down for the region to determine whether you can join. Piss off. That really irks me. Because if, you know, there's got to be a criteria, I accept. If you can't meet the criteria, but the country wants to, then that's where we've got to start helping them. So th there's a number of... That's, that's the key. That's the key. Because, okay, in I, I think in football, back when I used to watch it, to play in the Champions League, you have to have a certain capacity in your stadium. That's a, in simple terms. That was the, you, you, Even if you qualify and you don't make it, yep. you can't play. So the rugby equivalent would be you want to do it, you're getting close, but obviously funding in, in the case of our island or brothers and sisters in places far, far away, Gibraltar, uh, where they're trying really hard, they're working hard, they're thinking differently. Um, that's where the funding should start. And then it funnels back to the guys like us, like England, like New Zealand, who have um, a steady stream of sponsorship support, uh, a full stadium all the time. You know, you've got to be smart about it. But we've also, you and I and all of us watching, have to also be realistic and this this is the bit that hurts to say out loud at the end of the day our beautiful game is a business and that's they've got to answer to sky sports they've got to answer to all these various people um you know it's 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 a bit icky to say but we've got to balance those things that's why if you've got to use the business say p show's new idea or whoever's new idea of the world club championship in starting in 2022 the winning club gets 100 million euro. Now it's sponsored by 18 different companies and they all give 10 million each, whatever. But if you want that to happen, you've got to take the power away from, uh, you know, this, the likes of the Six Nations or whatever. And that comes down to money. I love the Six Nations. I think the only thing missing is promotion relegation because that gives everyone who is just outside that tournament something to aim at. It gives someone, it gives everyone something to be excited about on the last day of the tournament. Uh, and it just it's a no it's a no lose situation, but they're scared of change. See the thing is, there's a lot of people who turn around and have said to me, Yeah, but Shep, you're missing the point here, probably. Uh, you know, re retired former prop, you know, clearly. Um, that the, the problem with the Six Nations is well, there's only one team close, and that's Georgia, and uh, actually Italy keep thumping them in the past couple of years, blah 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 blah. So you're gonna have the same thing. I don't give a monkey's toss. I don't give a monkey's toss whether those teams in the, the second division can't get there currently because the systems will be put in place where they can arrange to, to, you know, they can work towards that with support. If you've got the system and build it, they will come. Now, promotion relegation is whoever got the wooden spoon plays the top yes. of the division two. Simple. And if, yes. and if those division two teams, it takes them 25 years to, to win one game to get up there then it takes them that long but you've got the system in place that they can aspire to and that's what both candidates are saying and bugger all's been done it goes back again why because they're controlled by this you know so i find it, it, it it's just annoying it's just annoying because it makes sense it like are you are people actually going to tell you that in a playoff situation over a decade that romania aren't going to beat italy once you know that means that <laughs> one year one year and ten they're going to get Six Nations rugby, which brings money to them. And, and maybe that's what they're worried about, because the amount of money for a union, because they would lose that. Well, actually, there's ways around this, because the Six Nations, each each union owns one-sixth of it. So yeah. actually, even if they they could still have a control and monopoly on that, because the prize money is for the teams involved, not the profits involved yeah. for the Six yeah. teams. So if Italy or England or Ireland, just so we don't offend our Italian friends, went down one year getting beat by Romania or Georgia who had a freak year and just went up. Yeah. Then, you know, so what? Italy would still have one sixth of the profits because they own the company. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's this, but I think that if people are afraid that the amount of revenue they would lose from sponsors and TV yeah. things by not being there. And I get that because it goes back to what you say. It is a bloody business, but it's not right. It's not ever going to help the others to aspire to. Right. Before we move on very, very quickly, brother, um, I put a link up there 
Um, I'm going to bring up some people's uh, points just a minute. I can't even find it. Jeez, is that many? Uh, I'm going to have to go back up and uh, I can't even find it. I put a link up there, guys, that you can come into the studio and you can pose a question or you can put a point uh, across. It says um, uh, HTTPS uh, app.blive.74.guess. If you want to do that, click on that, come in. I'll see you in the studio and then we'll add you in. Right, Kigo, who have we got on? What are people saying to us? Uh, Rianne Noel Phillips, uh, she's with uh, Sir Bill, we know that one. Um, um, she says, I'm with the consultation for players, but they don't have a good track record of it. Uh, no, uh, Ian Gilbert in Madrid says, Picho will be better for second tier rugby than Bill, he thinks. I, I agree with that. Uh, Z says, uh, Quinton uh, Van Ice Cream, uh, the, the, it's a Fab Hansen quote. Oh, I missed that one. Uh, I missed that one. Do we need to go back up? Uh, politics and rugby. It's like kissing your sister. It's a, it's a kiss, but it shouldn't happen. <laughs> that's a different podcast entirely. That's, yeah, uh, it, it is. Yeah. But you know what, mate? If that had been on the other week, you would have won a, you would have won some uh, coffee. <laughs> that's that's true, true. Yeah. You know, that's almost what that's all. That's that's almost what Nigel could have been saying in that one, or what Joe Marler, Joe Marler said. Joe Marler, mm, Mr. Tickle uh, said to <laughs> said to your man. Uh, but there we go. Moving on. Uh, Kigo says uh, he wants a video game, so he's looking for Gus. Uh, Gregor Galway says he's with Sir Bill. Uh, Nigel Quigley, White Walker, one of their North that says behind the uh, behind the, uh, the the massive um, ice curtain says it doesn't matter uh, who wins uh, if they try to change anything, they'll be outvoted. And I think that's what happened to Gus last time. Actually, you're very true, Nigel. Clever man as well, Nigel. Uh, two plus Tiger in many ways, uh, but not the uh, Tiger that we've seen previously. Uh, right, who else have we got? Uh, uh, what have we got here? Uh, in replying to Ian Gilbert, there, uh, Nigel quickly goes on. Uh, Pichot wants uh, X Games for all nations annually, and the clubs will never back that again. It comes back down to club versus country, money, people, leagues versus in competitions, etc. 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 Uh, and, and again, it goes back to my you take the you, you put. You put the onus on the unions to support tier two and tier three, then actually the leagues, the competitions, Neil, have to fall in place somewhat. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. And the pro we, we keep going in this circle, and I, I'm starting to think we're in Groundhog Hour. Like, it, it all comes around to this. If the, if the Pro 14 become the Pro 16, become the Pro 18, none of this is going to work. You know what I mean? If, if Gallagher yeah. Premier Two keep, they'll add in a couple of teams. It all doesn't work. It all falls apart. So the problem is you can't fight these guys because they own – they own their little piece of the world, and we all know that in our lives and our working lives. You, you've got to navigate. You know, my. You know, people say my, my baby is the most beautiful baby, when in reality it's got two heads. We've She's got to really wish somebody said that about me, mate. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but the only way to do it is to beat it with business, and that's the problem. Yeah, um, hundred mil to win the club championship or to win a country championship solves the problem. So let's get the money in. Uh, it does. I think in the new world order post-COVID, which I think actually mm. will go into well into next year now, personally, uh, and I think people need to sort of, uh, you know, I keep seeing people posting up, you know, writing, right, you know, no disrespect to the people who who, who do the written word, um, because they are no different than us, uh, creative people. Um, I, use term, I use that term loosely for myself, clearly. Um, but uh, but right on stuff like you know well you know you know this uh, this competition uh, may not go ahead this year. And this, Jesus lads, get with the program. Look, all's going to happen this year. That's it. You know we're going to do is stay home, stay safe, and um, you know stop being a pain in the ass in the UK to the civil police and to the Angada Shikana over here. Don't mix in groups and don't give them any lip backwards. Uh, you know I mean otherwise you're going to find a spittoon on your head, a spit uh, cover on your head. Z so he says uh, the old guard versus the new blood. Yeah, look, it, 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 same as any organisation. You know, I'm the vying for trying trying to move together. Um, the old guard has done uh, next to nothing for the Pacific Islanders and other T2 countries. I disagree with that. There is actually, if you if you look at, and I know we've covered this, if you look at actually all the things they have done, we just don't see it as much because mm. we don't see the tangibility that Kigo spoke about before. So um, I, I think there is things. But again, as an overarching organisation, Z, you know, if we give the onus back to World Rugby overseeing regions that aren't involved in politics rugby europe and that's a public thing so i can say that because that was just diabolical dreadful um and and making tier one teams support tier two and tier three teams then you're going to take an awful lot of that problem away because part of that is going to be done rather than world rugby trying to force it through but uh we we, we, we will see kigo 
Yeah, it's it's a tricky one because we've if you put on the other hat, if you own the Six Nations, okay, and you you've got these full stadia uh, for the six teams in general, the six teams that are there, and someone comes in and says, "Joe, uh, that tournament you have, right? It's great, uh, but I I want to take over. Um, you, we're going to shrink it by one team, or we're going to add in one team." You're not going to be in control of it. The first thing you're going to say, I know, you, I know you, Joe, would say, for the love of the game, for the right of the game, okay. But if 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 the dinner on the table is based on this, I would suggest that both of us would say something that rhymes with duck off, and that's the problem. It is, I, you know. I, I'm just, you know, looking at. Uh... Uh, and aren't we all saying how important grassroots is? Yeah, I mean, in two and a half years, we must have covered grassroots and the academies and the systems and, and looked at different options. And we're still talking about the same things. And we can do it at our level. So here you go. Closest we're going to get to owning Six Nations, mate. There's a Six Nations book. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, but as uh, but we have a vested interest. And I go back to what was, uh, was a guy said before. You know, Professor, very learned lady, but a very simple question of why haven't ordinary, ordinary fans got a vote? A cross section of people um, having having um, having a, a vote on what should be done. Um, I think that's a that's a bit. It's a bit simplistic me saying that on, on the back of these things. But actually, if you're going to have true engagement, uh, we do that at, at our level. You know, we could dictate what we do with our shows, but we don't. We we look at joint ventures with others. We say, what would you want to discuss in your topic? What are the key takeaways you want to do? Well, why why can't any? Because it's an organisation that that is not easy to change. It's like the old super tanker. It wants to change, but it takes so freaking long to stop to turn itself uh, around. Nigel Quigley uh, echoes the point that we both brought up before. Not being funny, but um, uh, yeah. have either of them put any detail behind their plans? That is vague. We discussed that at the very beginning. Uh, you might have been asleep, Nigel. It's been a long day <laughs> since our call this morning with you and Rianne. I say Rianne. What you know? He said he said his name was Rianne, but I th personally think it was Des Mikoska in France, uh, who was on a different who was on he was on a different time zone, mate, in France. And you know, I think that was down to him watching Coronation Street. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Rugby chat and banter's Des McCusker watches Coronation Street during the lockdown in France. You heard it here first. It's embarrassing, I know, but I, I wouldn't um, give him a vote if, he, if and, that's the kind of behaviour he's into. I wouldn't. Give oh, him a vote. dreadful! And he's on next week's show as well. <laughs> <laughs> talking about the British Nice Lions, so uh, he probably have uh, Bernard Laporte in in the Lions team to go to Germany on. So Des, we're looking forward to that. Great crack this morning, you two. Mm. Uh, Nigel quickly, uh, Z replies to says um, uh, they. Uh, uh, they, they knew Kegel didn't want any. <laughs> there we go anyway. Context. Uh, so, uh, how, if we're talking about the fact that world rugby is a bit of a toothless beast and it doesn't matter who gets in because they'll have no control because it's money and it's competitions and blah, 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 blah. What, what was the first thing that you would want them to do, Neil? Well, I think, I think that the 10 year plan is a great idea if you if you pick one thing so the problem is uh, again a lot of us are doing all right in terms of work but ticket prices are too high uh, yeah. but but the money needs to go into our local clubs so uh, i think that's the key i think all of us listening and watching and all this having a bit of crack when this whole covid thing disappears find your local club go down there and and get involved watch the games uh, if you're young enough, go train. Um, that's where it starts, and, and that's where you feel important is in your local club. It's when it gets up to this level, you feel unimportant. If they were to give all of us a vote, the only proviso behind that would be you would have to be a paid member of your local club. You'd have to pay your sub, and you would have to have your membership number, blah, 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 and that's how you vote if you wanted to vote. Now, the problem with that is you're then looking at millions and millions of votes it, there's admin behind that, but it's it's a better, more honourable way. It's a more honest way to do it. For me, I think the biggest problem is access to international games. I think I think I think the prices are far too high. So if they keep the prices for Ireland, for example, at the same price, they need to do something for everybody else. So whether it means renting out the RDS with a big screen and a band and beer, something like that, you know. To help to make everyone feel involved because at the top level, uh, as much as I love singing Ireland's call, whether it's in the Lucky Boozer or in the living room, I don't feel involved because I can't afford to go there unless I don't pay a bill and I 
I I have to do that. Or, or, or take yourself to Dublin Docks for the weekend. That's that's much out of that. You, you? you have no proof uh, yeah. that that was me that time you picked me up in a car. Exactly. There we go. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I got some, a message that he's saying. Is there a problem with my? Is there a problem with my screen? I keep looking over to the well to the left hand side. Uh, no, it's not. Because the way that the uh, the way the studio <laughs> people don't understand, um, I know disrespect, but thank you for that. Um, uh, <laughs> what is that? I, I can't keep the show going. Uh, no, what happens is is that the the back office studio, all the, all the comments that are coming in on Facebook as it's going out live, are on my right hand side. So I'm not ignoring Kigo. We're looking at a problem down there. In fact, here we go. I'm going to show you what happens there. Jesus, lads, that's the inception. That. that is. The control of it. It's Kigo waving a Kigo waving a Kigo. And so that's 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 how we are set up. So hence the reason I'm looking here and everywhere. I'm putting comments up and bringing uh, slides and things in. There we go. So there we go. Here we go. So you had a, a bit of a background look into what we're doing. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Desmond Kuska uh, has finished watching Coronation Street in the end. <laughs> and uh, has said that uh, bang on Neil, us BS fans, bog standard. Uh, what it's gone now. Uh, what do you mean us? What do you mean us? <laughs> yeah. I, I know a professor, and she is smart. I, I, absolutely, yeah. Uh, there we go. There's the link I put up uh, before, lads. If you want to come onto the show now, click on that link. You'll end up in the studio, and you can come and chat with me and Keegan. And we'll put you live to the world. So there we are. So that's the link you need to click if you want to be a guest. Uh, Johnny Whopper, Johnny. Good evening to you, sir. How are you? Uh, world Rugby are the monkeys, and the Money Men are the organ grinders. Yeah, so you know, some may think that. Um, it, but money, we do need. We've discussed this before as well. We do need money in the game, but it's how much it controls the game. So that you know, games are forced to be on on a Thursday or a Friday or a Saturday or a Sunday. You know, European games because the TV want them to be on a five thirty on a Sunday in France, and then you've got to get people back. That's not helping the ordinary fans, Neil, is it? That sort of thing. So, but again, people, companies who run competitions are only interested in their own investors. So well, we had we had in the was it the Heineken Cup where we had Connacht and Munster playing at the same time? Mm. Was it two or, two or three rounds in a row? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Go, well, like that's that's not going to work ever. So, who do we think is most uh, most likely to get through, and why? Neil Keegan. Likely, Big Bad Bill, because he's going to play the game. Uh, who I would like, I actually would would like some. Something new without disrespecting what has happened. I think fresh thinking is important in 2020. Things are going to change when this, this thing lifts off us all. And I think we need someone who does think slightly differently, even though they both work together and they are both very similar in reality, because otherwise they wouldn't have worked together. Okay. You can live with that. Nigel Quigley is saying that uh, uh, two things. The Lions talk to the USA, which is what Gus uh, Pichot is, is espousing to. Uh, do we really want to see the US teams hammered for three weeks? Um, and relegation uh, in the Six Nations at this point is just swapping cannon fodder until the Tier 2 competition level improves. New team. Can I just grab one, one quick thing about touring USA? Yep. Uh, what they're going to do is they're obviously going to get the HSBC money, but they're also going to go out to tender to these states in America who will pay massive money to get 60,000 expats, mad Irish people into a stadium buying beer. So like business wise, it's a great decision. Uh, and the lads, it's not really going to be a taxing game for the guys who are brought over, which helps us. If you put your blue Jersey back on or your red Jersey or your white, or your green Jersey, they're not going to be battered for that lines tour. If they're going to America, they're actually going to be chilling a wee bit because it's not going to be taxing for them, but it's all money again. It, but and it also comes down to the amount of times, the amount of games and minutes the guys are playing as well. If you sort that out on a global rugby calendar, uh, and they're playing less games and they're playing more, you know, engagement things, you know, less is more. Less is more sometimes. Then actually, you've almost got a uh, what's the old basketball team? You know, it's that sort of thing. I understand what Gus is saying, and I agree that actually. The British and Irish Lions, British and Irish Lions, like the bar, probably second to the bar bars for promoting the game of rugby around the globe. Next week, we'll be looking at the first of two part series on whether it's relevant now and icons of it and whether it should continue. But um, uh, uh, we've got in here, uh, 
In fact, sorry, first one, first one. So this one says, get Nigel in. Uh, Nigel is on next week. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, I was speaking a lot of sense there. Nigel is on next week for part one of the Schneider's Lions. Uh, Jose Antonio, uh, uh, Matteo Garcia says in Spanish. Oh, Jesus. Well done. Well done. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, hope, I hope we got your name uh, just about right, uh, Jose. Um, so, uh, but uh, speaking in Spanish, uh, I'd, I'd love to, brother. I'd absolutely love to. Uh, uh, no Tiago. Uh, well, neither do we, mate. Neither do we. We're just about keeping it together here. So uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we, we would love to. And uh, we are looking. We are looking to do more spin-off shows in uh, in countries like South America and Spain and stuff like that, especially Argentina, uh, where we will have host guests who will speak in your language. Come to us if you've got people who can support us and put the show, we can put the shows together, but we need support to be able to do that. And you can have your own uh, hosts and things like that on in your own language. But until then, lads, you know, you know, this is this is not the BBC or Sky News or anything like that. Demo O'Rourke, it's all about the money. The whole uh, rugby world will be utterly changed in 2021. Uh, what else? Yeah, but the loss the loss of income is good. We spoke oh. about three wall before. Like the loss of income is going to ruin any sort of positive decisions in short term. Uh, like that paywall thing, it disappeared pretty quick, but we might be losing rugby to sky for, for a little while. Well, it's all right. Rugby Australia today, uh, 196 yeah. top players took a 60% pay cut. Well, like I, I don't know what I don't know what the standard of living or the cost of living is in, in Australia, but uh, fair play to them. They're they're sacrificing for their team, for their for their for their nation, which is great. Um, you talk about you know different players being furloughed closer to home. It's 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 a tough one. Um, technically, there's nothing for them to be paid to do, but uh, you've also got to take care of your your people on your team. So yeah, you do. Yeah, I mean, so tough. I've said before that but at the end of this, unfortunately, we will see companies, organisations, uh, sporting teams uh, never play again. So, unfortunately, I think the reality is that we have seen them play their last games in different sports. Uh, Ian Gilbert, our ambassador extraordinary in Madrid, I think is replying to Jose, Jose Antonio there. Not sure what he says, but it is, um, it's something cosmopolitan and eclectic. It's in Spanish. I'm hoping that, uh, Jose, you can understand that. Uh, and um, Ian, if you want to stick up for English for the rest of us, then we'd love that bit of it. <laughs> Multinational, eclectic. Educationalizing engagement you get on this show. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Rian Noel Phillips, um, it's just not going to happen. The Six Nations is a company and a profitable one. Uh, that World Rugby uh, will have a hell of a job changing policy without the buying. Yeah, it goes back to the same things again. We all say the same thing. And, and I and I consider that, you know, most people that we have on uh, on here, lots of their own forums or have a uh, an engaged way of debating and thinking things through. So I just don't understand why we're still talking two and a half years on, mate, from the first time we talked about how do we solve world rugby issues. It's, nothing's changed. Uh, Catherine Beach, okay, we hope that you are better. I'm glad that your coffee, who is one of the winners on our global rugby quiz, uh, arrived at your sister's. Fair play. Uh, you need about uh, 500 GNTs to absorb sufficient uh, quinine to uh, treat COVID-19, so you better drink. <laughs> oh, I yeah, love it. Too. We have got medical advice coming down that we oh. need to do. Oh, that's just blown me away. Challenge out. accepted. So, um, please go to a proper medical <laughs> if you're having any any symptoms of COVID-19 or any illnesses whatsoever. But in the meantime, you can boost your own system uh, by having 500 GNT <laughs> be enough quinine to be able to uh, to to to. Uh, so you need to drink faster. So. Okay. No, well done. Absolutely brilliant. And oh, in fact, I've seen that uh, some bloke called Nun Eel Keegan has accepted your challenge. Uh, we're going to be interested to see that one. Um, Z says uh, she agrees, but uh, the old guard uh, said that before women got the vote, things can change. Uh, yeah, but I mean, don't be throwing yourself under a horse, Mrs. H. We you know, <laughs> need, need you on a show in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> We've got things to do, yeah. Um, Des McCusker, ah, look, Des, you got, you got, you got the free coffee and and my check in the post. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is such a great show; pisses me off a bit, but it's honest. That's uh, a real compliment sandwich. That's like, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. That that is the original Oreo cookie. Uh, yeah, is that isn't it? You know, uh, such a great show; pisses me off a bit, but it's honest. <laughs> <laughs> 
Welcome. Well, listen. That's another T-shirt. That's another T-shirt we need made. Absolutely. Great. <laughs> the Keith and Joe show. You know, great show. Pisses me off a bit, but it's honest. Oh, that's that's made me laugh on the Monday. Absolutely, absolutely superb. I'm going to have to take this off. Like, sorry, I've lost the. Uh, no, I haven't. I thought I'd lost the inside of something. Was sticking to me chest. There we go. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Oh, so here we go. Demo are up. Demo, well. well um, uh, agreed with uh, Kigo, uh, we need a, a relegation system to uh, motivate the Italys of this world to play harder and uh, those uh, on the cusp like George or something to aim for. Well, I mean, that's what uh, that's what Gus is saying. Uh, Augustin Pichot, uh, the current vice chairman, going for the chairman of uh, World Rugby, uh, he is saying exactly uh, do that. But will we be able to? I'm just not convinced that we'll be able to get it through. But I think if anybody is going to, and I think that. COVID-19, as bad as it is, allows us to reset and, and, and to realign ourselves. So there we go. Um, <laughs> the women of D4 don't want to go to Romania when they can go to Rome. Uh, I didn't want you to read that one out. I didn't want you to read that one out. That's I'm true. Sure. Okay, you know what happened. Uh, what else have we got there, Nigel Quigley? Uh, every season, uh, so they get five games to uh, to prove themselves seriously when uh, what's happened in uh, the past. It's only part of the solution, I think. And again, it comes back down to, for me anyway, the solution is that World Rugby put a global calendar, woo, put a global calendar in place. They put a global league type thing in place where people can aspire to. They have tier one nations as they were, supporting tier two and tier three in coaching and equipment and playing games and giving them additional funding to bundle through. There's three great things straight away now that will, for me, bring some of those teams on far better than what we're doing now. And here's a question. If not this, then what? If not this, then what? Because there's nothing else being espoused by anybody that I can see. Um, in fact, here we go. Pablo Capella. Pablo Hola. Our, Argentine, our man in Argentina. Uh, here we go. See. Uh, he says that many people from uh, uh, Argentina uh, are joining the group and are asking for translation. Yet we have me. Absolutely right. And, and uh, I know that we've spoken about this before. And, and we, you know, we, I sit in some South American groups and, and I spend the time, as, as you know, Pablo, going in and using Mr. Google Translate to send messages and stuff. Um, but unfortunately, we just can't do that on the show at the moment for every language. So we do want to do a South American Spanish uh, show with host Pablo. You know you're on the list to be one of our hosts, but we need to find funding and support to be able to put the shows together. So uh, for our friends in South America and Spain or any any of the countries where you've got your own language, we want to do that. I'm in contact now with Ruby Asian, with Ruby India. We want to be doing things in other people's language, but we can only do some. We are not Sky. We don't have no funding currently to be able to do this. So Pablo, you're absolutely right, mate. And um, I, I will PM you tomorrow and we'll look at seeing what we can uh do uh, what else have we got um z says that uh, that's going back to to kigos and to um i think it was that yeah into catherine's uh comment that she's watching in a dry state in the middle east yep uh in gilbert oh, it's, it's awful it's awful z you wouldn't like it at all absolutely in was actually just replying there to to our to our spanish friends our Spanish-speaking friends uh, across the globe, and you're all very, very welcome to the show. Not enough time to instantly translate for him. Um, I checked him out. Uh, plays, uh, plays mirror rugby, uh, but not see. Oh, I see. Uh, but not serious view. Invite them to take a long walk and a short pier. Wow. <laughs> well, there we go. There's, 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 a, there's a solution. There, there are other, <laughs> there are other solutions as well um, out there, but Ian, but. Uh, Oh, very valid, uh, having a point on there as well. Johnny Whopper, what about uh, the island store in the US? Yeah, we've covered that one, uh, as well as making it a rugby marketing roadshow. I think that's what Gus is saying, Neil, isn't it? Yeah. That yeah, he yeah. wants it to be a bit of a raise awareness. It's a high profile. It's more, you see, you could almost do, you could almost do a British and Irish Lion sort of B team type thing mm -hmm. for that type of thing, which your, your top marquee players aren't getting overplayed. Yeah, I, I think what we can, yeah, I think what we can do. I think if we put the money thing to one side, we've battered that dead fish. So we we know that. So if we look at the Lions going to America, what does the game gain from it? And so people in America are going to see packed out stadiums, uh, hopefully with top quality ball, um, and their their home nation playing. 
Now, whether they bring, uh, as the last comment there, Australia, New Zealand over as well and have the Lions tour around Robin tournament in America, that's completely different. But if you, the Lions tour in America, again, money aside, I actually quite like that idea. I, I like the idea of Americans seeing the game, jam-packed stadium, top-level ball, really, really good play, um, followed by handshakes afterwards. None of this nonsense that you see in American football, if you call that a real game. Like, they get to see it uh, at their time zone, at their required time. They're made to feel important. Like you always say, Joe, that's what we got to do, people. They feel important. It's at their time. They can have a beer. They can watch it. I don't see anything wrong with it. I actually see it being a good idea. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Again, it comes down to the amount of time the guys are playing. And mm. for a lot of people, the Lions is the pinnacle in the Northern Hemisphere. I know it doesn't include France, so no disrespect to them or Italy, but it's the pinnacle of uh, really the Northern Hemisphere rugby in many ways, in many ways going across the globe. <clears throat> so does it detract from it? It's a point I'm no doubt in, in next, the next two week shows that will be brought up to uh, to, to cover that. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we uh, Jesus, we're up to 60 minutes already. You're welcome to the show. The Kigo and Big Joe Show prevent, presenting World Rugby Elections Away Forward or A Forward with past and by our um, by our good friend Ruin at uh, Calpify, who's doing our intros now for us, and sustained as ever by our good friends at coffeedog.ie getting us through. So, Tess uh, Nikoska uh, in France says that uh, Ken Barlow's vote for Bill Beaumont, apparently. He has just come up on Coronation Street, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nigel Quigley has a serious point up there. Uh, this is going to be interesting next week because Nigel, Des, and Rihanna are all on um, episode one of the Lions uh, show, uh, which will be quite uh, interesting. But Nigel says he'd prefer to see Georgia put a team in the Pro 14 as the Hagiwaras have done in Super Rugby. Uh, yep. You know why not? Uh, you, you know it, it, that's that's another thing that you uh, you could do. Z says um, the money thing is a double-edged sword. It's a balancing act. Um, I just don't like the way it's ruining it. But she realizes that she is. Well, she, she's coming from a place where the the union owns the owns the game or owns half of the game. Yeah. Now I think Z commented earlier on, like they own half of the game, so nothing gets done without their approval. Like. They had forward thinking. We had forward thinking after the fact, which doesn't really count. Like, I, I think, talk, speaking about the Lions taking uh, tension off the players in minutes, if you were to make it the Northern Hemisphere Lions as opposed to just the British and Irish Lions, I know that affects the, the Sky Sports marketing, but that brings, uh, that makes the player pool bigger. You have obviously would have to bring in a certain amount of players from each country, which means that some players would be left at home to recover. Uh, and it would be more of a, uh, a group, more of a, a cohesive unit, more of a unified thing, unified game, uh, wherever you go. And, you know, it might, be. it won't happen, but it's a good option. Cool. Uh, nice. Uh, just to wrap up the show, I think, lads, uh, well, it would be both as a T1, Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere most of the time. Um, uh, have one tour between the two home and away and you yeah, need the other tour time for tier two. Um, I, I think I think once you get a global calendar, which is always going to be difficult because you do the end of tours, uh, the, the end of years. Uh, and in fact, he brings up this thing, she says to back to Johnny Whopper, uh, stage your summer tours, which would be the end of year tours, actually, um, out there in America, I think is what she's saying. Uh, and that way, you are raising the profile out there. It's been done very successfully on tours by clubs, provinces, uh, regions, et cetera, et cetera, and internationals. Uh, I mean, look at Ireland and um, just throw that one in there, Ireland and the All Blacks uh, winning there. Um, and, uh, yeah, look, you know, there's an awful lot of... Uh, uh, yeah, in fact, uh, Ian Gilbert says, um, as far as what you say there, uh, Kigo, or bringing the lines uh, into France and Italy uh, as well. Look, th there's, there's an awful lot of things that could be done. But if we simplify it to finish off tonight, because we could go on for this for about three hours. For Kigo, before, I'm going to get you to finish up, but for me, I'm just going to say again, what I want, whoever gets in, uh, and I, and I, I respect both men highly for, for what they've achieved in rugby and rugby administration. And I'll just point out to by, by the way, guy who was on a site the other day, Southern Hemisphere site, who said that uh, um, Fitzy uh, Fitzpatrick should be uh, from uh, the former uh, New Zealand uh, hooker, fab, fab, fab guy, who's done no rugby administration, should be chairman because he was the best hooker in the world and he would add value. Sure he would, but tell you what, 
does he want to stop eager funder and get involved in rugby administration because Pichot and uh, and Sir Bill Beaumont have been involved at rugby administration at every single level they have proven themselves so it's preferences and what you think whether you perceive Sir Bill as being more of the old guard in comparison to Gus I think that uh, I, I think that's what it, uh, it that's all ever, ever going to come down to. So for me, I want to see World Rugby get a control of the competitions and have that engagement with the competitions and get them to buy in that it's more uh, important for people. I want Tier One teams to be able to. I want a global calendar. I want a global league, and I want where where teams can aspire to to rock themselves through. And I want finally to see that. Um, uh, tier one teams are supporting tier two and tier three with equipment, funding, training, and games that will help them move forward. That's my solution. Kigo, finish us off. I, I wouldn't argue with a lot of that. I want to see a sensible roadmap, whether it's 10 years or 100 years. I want something, someone who has an idea that they've researched, not just like a politician saying stuff. We all love the game, we all care about the game. Um, if we see it going in the right direction, and I think most of us agree on everything. In this instance, I don't see we would have a problem whether it was Bill or, or Pichot. Whoever has the most cohesive and realistic roadmap for the future of our game with the big dangling carrot of money around it, uh, they'll win and they should win. I, I just, I hate politics in sport. I hate politics in our game. The honesty on the pitch gets destroyed by the politics of it. So uh, whether, if anyone here is in their, in their grassroots club, don't play politics, play the game. Uh, good man himself. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have been watching, and if you've only just joined us, because I'm conscious that we are conscious that around the globe, uh, you know, people are waking up in the likes of New Zealand uh, and Australia and the Pacific Islands. There's an awful lot of all these other countries as well. Um, you, this is the Kegel and Big Joe show, uh, looking at world rugby elections uh, a way forward or a forward past. Do you agree with it? Who do you agree with? So Bill Beaumont and his running mate, uh, the French legend Bernard Laporte, uh, and they are legends, guys. So I use I don't use that word too often, uh, or oh, sorry, too much. But I think they they are legends. They've proven themselves. So his running mate, so Sir Bill and Bernard, Monsieur Bernard, um, or Gus uh, Augustin Pichot, um, for uh, you know who do you want? I think it's who you think will add more value across all of the levels. And that's why for me, as much as I admire Sir Bill, everything that he has done at every level of rugby administration, I am pimping for Gus because I think he will bring more to bringing the Old, the old tier two, tier threes and grassroots, I think more over the next five years, especially with the way that funding and COVID-19 and everything that has, has done to that. Go back to the beginning of the show. Watch the show. Put your comments in on the links that we put in. We we did for your, uh, for ease, we put in both of the manifestos as much as the are manifestos. You know, there's not much tangibility there. There, we discussed that as well. Uh, to today, uh, Kigo's quite right. We really need sort of that's if you like the strategic bit, yeah, yeah, it's okay. But what are the operation? What is the detail that, that you're going to do, and when are you going to do it by? So that ordinary people like us and our viewers and everything else can have a look and see where that is going to go. It's been a really interesting chat. Um, I made a command decision while I've been on the show tonight that I'm not going to do a Wednesday show because we're going to let this particular show run and we're going to reshare it on. Uh, on Thursday, <coughs> we will, after on th people know that we've now got uh, a new show. The second show of this is the Springbok and South African Rugby Roundup, which we did as a test uh, a week last Friday. It was hugely successful. Seven and a half thousand people watched that. <coughs> and we asked, we asked whether we could do another one. We are doing another one on Thursday <coughs> where we will be looking at a whole pile more of stuff of global rugby, but based around uh, Springboks and uh, South African uh, Rugby Roundup. And we have uh, former Western Province, that's from off Anton Chayat on there. And we have USA head coach, uh, the uh, legendary Gary Gold on the show on Thursday. So I don't think it's actually fair to key going to the views tonight. They were show on Wednesday, so we're not going to do one on Wednesday. We're going to let this run. And we get asked to reshare this. We will reshare this again over the next couple of days. And then Thursday, we will do, and I think that's more pertinent to, to do this week as well. So <clears throat> in the future, uh, next Wednesday show, though, 
uh, will be part one of the British and Irish lines when I'm doing, a, we are doing a, Three Bugs of All the Bolt is doing a joint venture with Rugby Chat and Banter. We've got fans in five on. We've got a fantastic uh, uh, organization from the UK called Be a Local Hero, who have got a phenomenal idea of keeping businesses going, voucher systems until they reopen again. So we've got them coming on. We've got the team that run the unofficial British and Irish Lions Rugby Forum off Facebook are coming on. To, uh, to be on the show, tell us about what they're doing. And then we've got the team from Rugby Chat and Banter. We've got Rihanna or Phillips. We've got Nigel Quigley and Desmond Kuska, if you can stop watching EastEnders and Coronation Street in France, who we're going to be talking to as part one of the British and Irish Lions show next week will be about uh, relevancy. Are the British Lions still relevant in the modern world? Uh, and and what can and, and and why is it relevant? We'll be looking at icons. They'll be looking at icons um, of the previous tours and memorable tours as well. And then the following week we've got Pro 14 will be Banter, who will be looking at a match day 23 or even the squad 40, the match squad for the uh, the touring 41 as well. So that's the next two weeks as well. Next Monday, myself and Kigo will be back with more interesting stuff uh, to do. Uh, again, like I say, we are engaging with people around the globe who now want us to do spin-off shows. That comes at the price, and the price is not much, but speak to us. I mean, Kiko, we'll try and come up with a plan where we can uh, say hola, uh, bonsoir, uh, and a whole pile of other things, at least two or three words that we don't have to <laughs> translate for. Uh, we do want to do more spin-off shows. Uh, we're working on some other stuff, but we need... Uh, we need hosts in those languages. We need people to fund it and support it. Not much uh, to be able to put it together. So if you want a show for your club, your province, your region, your franchise, your country, your business, your whatever, then contact us and let us know, and we will do our best to help us. But we can't keep going at the pace we're going uh, uh, at the moment. So join us Thursday for the second iteration with uh, with, the, with the great Andrew Daniel from Scrum 5 Rugby, who's... Uh, uh, I am his co-host. We are co-hosts putting that show out together. Uh, it's called uh, Dribocker, a ball of bod. <laughs> we, I've just kept it simple. I didn't want to sort of change that too much. Um, there you go, Dribocker, a ball of bod on Thursday at 20.30 hours uh, in Ireland, UK, 21.30 hours in South Africa. And again, that'll be on catch-up. Uh, and then, like I say, next Monday, me and Keegan will be back on next one. Go British Oh, it's all happening, lads. Kigo, enjoy yourself. Stay safe. And listen, you've got to finish off that garden. Not too many gin and tonics. That's it. Only 483 to go. So we're all good. Absolutely. Uh, stay safe, everybody. And, and Catherine Beecher, thanks very much for that. Um, where I've, I've now got to find a way of getting enough uh, quinine uh, in slimline <laughs> tonic and enough bottles of uh, various bottles. If, you're, if, you, if you make gin, by the way, if you're a gin for an aficionado and you want to send, send uh, and be a supporter of the Kigo and Big Joe show through gin, we are very susceptible to that. So, PM us, put a message in, let us know, and we will take gin, and you can be one of our supporters. You can have your, you can have your logo up there. We'll, you can get, you can get on the show and tell us why, you know, why your gins are better than that. Hey, Jesus, way. Oh, look, look, I'm getting rosy red cheeks just thinking about uh, you know, <laughs> 100, 100 different bottles of gin there that we could have. Until Thursday, in fact, it was Kate just at Kate Beaton at the end. Uh, remember, keep drinking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Keep drinking, but keep drinking alone where you can keep away from each other. Uh, to, from Z, thank you. Uh, uh, Mari, uh, good night. Uh, until uh, Thursday, uh, Kigo, stay safe, you and your family, mate. I will uh, talk to you in the in the back office in just 30 seconds. Until then, got a meal of Kigo. Bye.